So normally when we talk about reissues here on the podcast, we normally are talking about stuff that reissuing items that have not been on the shelves for many, many years. Beast Wars reissues that haven't been on store shelves in 25 years. G1 reissues that haven't been on store shelves for like 35 years, maybe even 40. And then you get the odd ones. You get those retro headmasters that we got of the Titans Return, which at the time when they came out in 2020, uh, those figures were only four years old. And it was like, okay, you know. Was it filling a market that really needed to be filled? Not really. Uh, I don't think there was a lot of people that missed out on those deluxes, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure some appreci people appreciated that nice retro packaging and that more Legends kind of paint scheme to it. So it was good. It was good. And now we have a reissue that kind of also dips into Transformer Finance because of what happened with the secondary market of it, and also considering the fact that this is a figure that comes from an era that really won't exist anymore in the modern era in terms of how production and budget and how toys are today we're getting a reissue of the transformers war for cybertron siege commander class jetfire the very first commander class we ever got and when this guy dropped again commander class didn't exist at the time probably the closest thing that was comparable to it in that price point would have been the supreme class supreme class is just a couple of years prior to that we're going for 74.99 so 75 bucks pretty much and when they invented this Supreme class, it was an ambitious idea. We're going to do something that's a big character, and he's going to get like this really well-done figure with tons of stuff and just a fantastic figure. I'll go deeply into why he's so great. But they were like, okay, and we'll do the, the $79.99 price point, $80, and that'll be our commander class, our very first commander class. And it was very successful. Um, a lot of people bought it, but he also came out around the time that the big V was starting to rumble a little bit. So when he started to go on sale, I remember like literally he went on sale at Toys R Us. I'm Canadian. Um, and then the week after that, we all went on lockdowns. And so a lot of people weren't able to get access to it. Obviously, everyone thought it was the end of the world and all that craziness. And as a result, the secondary market price for him skyrocketed. And not to mention, he's a really good figure. There's just a lot going on with them. The, 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 the fact that they were able to do something that was very show accurate of the Skyfire design from Generation 1, the faction swapping gimmick, the hidden peg hole design, which I still think is interesting and hasn't really been done since, the armor pieces with the mask and the chest, the tons of weapons that he comes with, the six different blast effects, just a fantastic figure. And he was huge, too. Like all the commander classes we've gotten afterwards have paled in comparison in size and what we really got with it. This guy was 12 inches tall. To give a comparison, our Victory Saber combiner that's combined together, Victory Leo and Star Saber HasLab combined, is 11 inches. This thing is 12 inches and was at the time only $79.99. And it's just, it's, he's, he was such a product of that era. Now, granted, also being a product of that John Warden era, uh, it also suffers from the photosensitivity. It does have yellowing issues and the kind of plastic that exists. But, I mean, considering the fact that we're able to get a second opportunity to pick this up, because when you look at the secondary market right now, as of this recording, there's guys scalping the original on, on uh, Amazon for like $200. And then if you go to Walmart Direct... You know, you always have those crazy guys. They're asking like 650 bucks and all those crazy numbers. And then even eBay, like loose, complete ones. Maybe you could get them for like 100 bucks, 110. And then after that, it's mint in box, 110, 150, 200. And, you know, the sky's the limit with those ones. So the reissue is coming out. Now, the current MSRP for commander classes that we have, like Rodimus or Motormaster that we have right now, is 84.99. And so that's about 85 bucks, pretty much. This one is going to be going for $89.99, so $90. That's probably how they're able to push it a little bit because the it's a commander class, but it really is a commander class from a whole other era. When you put him next to all the others that we've gotten thus far, he's just a, he's a, he's like a whole different plastic, you know, budget completely, and just an absolutely great figure. I think the reason also why they're doing this is. Right around the corner, 
uh, in February of 2023, we're going to have the MP57 Skyfire Masterpiece. And I think they want to just get one last run out of this Jetfire mold before the Masterpiece hits in the Japanese market and, of course, the people import in the Western world. So I think there's an opportunity for that. The comparisons between the two are debatable. I mean, the, the Masterpiece one is, I think, like two inches taller. It's 13.75 inches, so let's say 14 to round it off. So it's two inches taller, but it really does the same thing. And, I mean, yeah, it comes with a lot of the extra bells and whistles and the minifigs and stuff like that, and I dig it, and I still think it looks cool. I don't know if it's 269.99 cool. That's what it's the people are asking for it. But if you haven't picked up this Jetfire from Siege, I heavily suggest you to you do. This is a really good opportunity. This is your second chance if you didn't get it the first time because this guy is going to go up in value. He doesn't belong in the retail space today. His pricing, what he is, what he comes with, the weight and everything. I mean, this is a guy, I, I know it's going to sound crazy, but it's something that if, if Hasbro did something like this today, they'd figure out a way to sell this as a Titan. I'm telling you, like it's, it, I know that sounds crazy, but it's like, oh, I almost feel like they would want to do that. You know, they'd put a little few a little extra things and go, well, it's Titan class now. Like he, he's just a really bulky, amazing figure, great transformation, tons of stuff that he comes with. So if you haven't picked it up, it's a little bit of a financial segment too. pick him up because you're going to regret if you don't later. I don't know what, you know, jet fires or sky fires will get in the future. You know, we have that masterpiece, so that's the other option in terms of that Generation 1 aesthetic from, you know, 84, 85. But outside of that, I don't really see them doing something like this again. I think things are going to get smaller. I think things are going to get cheaper. And while he does have a little bit of the yellowing issue because he does come from that era, I still think it's a good buy. I really do at that price. And, I mean, for people that were able to get it on the discount price, I believe I want to say it was $50.00. When that that uh, discount happened, because look, historically, all these commander classes outside of obviously Skyfire, because he was right in the middle of the big V, but all the other commander classes have all gone on sale. And I think that they probably have a whole bunch of, you know, leftovers in the factories and they figure this is their opportunity to throw it out there before the masterpiece comes out and. It's a reissue. It's a reissue. All the different retailers are going to have it. Uh, even the online stores are going to have the matched prices. So, like, like a, I, again, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but the big bad toy stores, the TF sources, the Ages 3 and Ups and all of those. Uh, is Chosen Prime still around? I, <laughs> I, I think Corson's still around doing his thing. So, you know, check him out. I mean, I, again, pick him up if you get an opportunity. He's He's a really, really good figure. And uh, just to plug quickly, also if you haven't caught it, uh, again we haven't we didn't do a segment on Monday, we didn't do a segment on Friday because I was working hard at the Toy Armada segment, which is live today. So be sure to check that out, the Toy Armada with Aaron Archer. We do another deep dive in a whole bunch of Transformer toys, so go check that out. You might even learn something about some other Transformer stuff and just the toy industry in general. So check that out, guys, and we'll talk again real soon. <laughs>